Hi, well, in this video, um, I'm just going to be sharing some thoughts and feelings that I have about the uh, British election results, um, the United Kingdom election results that um, are still coming through, but obviously um, are um, in the wake of the uh, general election that we had yesterday. Um, so I guess the first thing I want to say is that um, as somebody um, that was born in England um, that has been living outside of England for a very long time, um, I was not eligible to vote in the election. And I feel that that is right. Um, that's the first thing I wanted to say. Um, I don't feel that I should any longer be voting really in the British elections. And the reason I say that is that I don't live there. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a part really of everything that's going on there. And so um, why should I be able to decide what's happening there? Um, so that's the first thing I want to say. Um, but beyond that, um, of course, I care about um, what's going on uh, back in England. I, before I came to Colombia, I used to work in the National Health Service. I worked um, for the um, Mental Health Trust in London, uh, it, the Maudsley Hospital. And so I feel very sad about the election results because the, the first thing that comes to my mind uh, when you have um, a conservative government is that, you know, they tend to and have been uh, withdrawing a lot of funding from public services um, and mental health services are obviously affected by that. So the first thing that comes to my mind are people that I used to visit in my uh, work as a psychologist in London um, that will now uh, have to suffer more years of, of cuts to their services and the situation is so serious that uh, I know that there will be people that are tempted or will be successful in committing suicide. I mean, that's how serious the situation is when you cut public services to the bone. Um, so that's what I have. And then, uh, of course, I think we all know that, you know, beyond, um, you know, uh, public services and things like that, um, this election was largely um, a part of the Brexit um, gangs, <laughs> for want of a better word, their, their um, insurgency, you know, in the, in the British psyche. And uh, since the referendum result and um, for Brexit, in favour of Brexit, uh, the country has basically been in a total mess. Um, I think since the, the Brexit uh, referendum, I've been to England, is it two or three times? I think twice. And well, the most recent time I went was a couple of months ago and I was quite disturbed by the England that I found when I touched down two years ago. The first thing I noticed is that there seems to be this massive, um, red, white and blue kind of thing going on. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I arrived in London and just everything is, you know, the British flag, everything is red, white and blue. Um, you're in the airport and you're trying to order a curry. <laughs> Good food. <laughs> Something that has some flavour. So you go to the airport, you're hungry, you order a curry and it says, you know, uh, made with British chicken, you know, something like that what like didn't used to be like this I used to just read a menu and just it would just say you know chicken madras it, it didn't it didn't have to have this kind of nationalistic um thing like shoved in your face when when you're eating a curry and and you know let's face it i mean the very fact that you're eating curry is evidence of um the the british's the british project of empire which has, I think, not really been assimilated, um, all the effects of that, um, you know, the, the, the oh, just everything to do with empire is just, you know, it's just so overwhelmingly horrible. And um, 
so all of this Brexit, you know, we all know that really Brexit is about very poorly um, acknowledged uh, imperialistic sentiment that was just kind of latent, I think, in the British psyche and and not really talked about. And um, now it's expressed itself in this horrible way. I mean, you know, it's just so awful. And but I think about it and I, I, you know, the I feel that the England that I used to hold at least try to hold on to in my heart as my native um, land, <laughs> you know, trying to keep a sort of torch for it, a bit like trying to trying to retain fond memories of, of past romances or something, you know, it's like desperately trying to keep this candle for England in my heart but I I feel now that everything that I really valued or loved about England is gradually disintegrating and and that is part of the reason I left England um when I left England I really didn't like the way um the health service was managed and um I didn't enjoy working in a hospital where I felt that so many clinicians and researchers and um, intelligent, clever people with, with diverse ideas were just gradually being finding that there was no position for them anymore in the system, a, a system that was just becoming more and more about money and um, how can we do it more cheap, how can we do everything cheap? Uh, and that includes mental health services, you know, like rather than talking to people about their suffering and investing in um, properly funded, um, deep psychological services for people in need, uh, it was, you know, how can we package therapy on a CD and, and give it to people um, so that they can just watch the CD at home and we don't even have to talk to them anymore. And, and I feel that that kind of represents the direction this government has been going in and, and politics has been going uh, for such a long time in England. By the way, if you can hear odd noises, it's my dog um, sighing. <laughs> Not sure if you can understand what I'm saying. Um, it's like a you know, kind of noise. Um, so all of this was happening and I saw so many colleagues that were, you know, with diverse perspectives on things that valued um, deep things suddenly finding that their contracts didn't weren't going to be renewed and that, you know they were going to be replaced by uh, somebody that just does neuroimaging constantly and and I guess you know you're watching this and you're you know you're not really interested in psychology perhaps and you're thinking well, what's this got to do with the election but um, for me it's got a lot to do with the election because I feel that this the way everything's going in England is about replacing um, soul <laughs> with um lies <laughs> you know just lies. and um i mean at least the current you know boris johnson's just been elected now for you know potentially five years um possibly more um we all know that this guy has just lied about so many things and what i find incredible is that the public go okay yeah let's let's have some more of this so people know what they're getting that there is no you know there's no mystery anymore i think i think running up to this you know i used to watch question time but then i stopped watching it so i just couldn't stand it anymore particularly when dimbleby left um you know Running up to this, you would have people saying, oh, people didn't know what they voted for with Brexit. And I, I kind of believed that. I kind of thought that a lot of people didn't know what they were voting for. Um, but this time round, with this election, nobody can say anymore people didn't know what they were voting for. I mean, people knew what they were, <laughs> they knew what they were going to get. You know, they knew they knew what this meant and it's what they wanted. And that's And that's the incredible thing is that sometimes... Um, I think trying to say that the public is ignorant is is completely wrong. You know, it's like people knew what they were going to get when they voted for uh, a Boris Johnson approach in politics. And the other really incredible thing is that we all know that these super posh rich guys are being, um, you know, 
propped up by not very rich, not very posh people. Um, and you're like, why are they voting for this? And I, I don't know. It's like you, you have. I think it's it's like in the British psyche, <laughs> is this sort of fondness for the aristocracy, even though the same people that probably voted for Boris Johnson would also say, oh, bless you, my, my dog is now sneezing. You know, the same people that voted for Boris Johnson would probably also say they didn't like the aristocracy. So I think publicly they might say they don't like these rich, you know, twits in their castles, but in the back of their mind, it's like something about it to them represents England, what England is. and they seem to kind of be trying to get that back and so I feel like this is a very nostalgic political decision it's like how else can you understand this I mean how else can you understand um people in you know huge parts of the northeast of England voting for you know Reese Mogg and Co like it just doesn't make any sense um why are you making such a strange noise darling <laughs> I think he's finished now. Um, so <laughs> I, I find it really peculiar, but um, I feel that my nostalgia for England has now died. It has now gone. Like, I feel like the last thing that's left is the Queen. And I feel like when the Queen dies, basically, that's the end. Um, I actually had an experience the other day where Somebody, I think, put on social media that the Queen had died and this kind of went semi-viral and everyone thought he died. And I actually felt quite sad and I, I was quite disturbed by it. And I um I told my I told my boyfriend and um I don't know, I think he thought it was a bit bonkers, but he kind of said, Yeah, I understand. Like, you know, when when the Queen dies, that's it, isn't it? That's it. And I thought, yeah, that's it. And it's not because I support the monarchy, um, but I, 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 it's like the Queen represents something to us about, um, you know, what's left of things. And um, we have to be look very deep inside ourselves and say, do we like the stuff that's left? I mean, is it, is it, is it that great? Should we be hanging on to it? Or should we be <laughs> trying to be a bit more progressive here? Um, and I think that's also what the European project um, represent. It, it represented uh, progression. It represented, you know, firstly it represented we don't want to be at war with each other anymore. And, and I live in a country that's either in or coming out of civil war, depending on your perspective. And when you live in a situation like that, when you live with war and, the and you know, the recent effects of war and you see the damage, um, you know, physically, like I talked about in another video on the roads and stuff, but also, um, you know, abandoned buildings, but also in people, you know, you see the damage in people, you become very, you know, uh, more, how can I put it, more conscious of the fact that we don't want to be at war with people. Like, it's war is not fun, you know. And I think in England, you know, people, for them, war is entertainment, like something you watch on television or something in a Netflix series or, you know, the narcos or, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, country's at war, this is exciting. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, gonna have a beer and I'm gonna sit on the sofa and I'm gonna watch something about war and I'm you know gonna play I don't know computer games with guns you know bang bang you know it's really you know it's exciting and maybe they even get turned on by it I don't know it's, but when you live with that it's like it's not entertainment it's 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 real life <laughs> it's, you know, it's not it's not fun it's it's really really shit you know it's it's you know causes damage for generations that is unimaginable if you've never lived in war and you've never seen um, army and guns and, and people suffering and, you know, people that have lost members of their family and uh, are still grieving those people and can't even make sense of what's happened or don't even know where they are, you know, where the bodies are like, or even what happened to them, whether they're alive or dead or, you know, it's not fun. It's not entertainment. So, Leaving Europe, for me, um, represents a lack of appreciation for what the European project gave, you know, which was, you know, peace. <laughs> peace and uh, the potential of dialogue and um, the potential to accept that you can disagree with people, but you can still um, discuss things in an adult way, um, you know, 
proportional representation, you know, <laughs> equal say. And, and it's like England have said, we don't want to debate, just do it our way. We don't, we don't need anyone else, you know, and, and they say, you know, oh, look at the past, you know, we used to rule the waves, we, we used to, um, we were so important. We can be important again, but it's like, what, what does England make anymore? I mean, what does it make? It, it made financial services. What is that anyway? It's like pushing money around that doesn't exist, you know, on computers. You know, you're like, wow, you know, that's a great product. And then we, and then we also have um, education, which was uh, we had the most. Yeah, we did have really good universities full, filled with really interesting people from all over the world. The thing is, this strategy makes those people's jobs either non-existent or makes them think, why would I want to, you know, work in, in England when I could do this job in, you know, the United States or Spain and be treated better? Like, why would you want to go to England and suffer all the racism and short-term contracts of, you know, nine months here or nine months there? I mean, who can live like that? You know, who can, you know, most people have children. I don't have children, but most people have children. You know, how on earth is somebody meant to bring up a child on nine month contracts or, or zero hour contracts? It's just, it's just absurd. It's just so awful. Um, and I feel that a lot of it has, uh, of the lack of appreciation for the European project has come from zero education in schools in England about what the EU was. Um, I remember when I was a student at school and I was like 12 or 13 and I went on a German exchange uh, study and we had to go to school in Germany. And I remember arriving at this school and seeing like people smoking outside the school and thinking, well, this, this can't be a very good school. Like, what, what are these young people doing smoking outside the school? But my goodness, was I wrong. I mean, you know, talk about judging a book by its cover. I remember these students would have lessons about what the EU was, um, you know, how subsidies worked for, um, you know, uh, agriculture, things like that. Does that happen in schools in England? I mean, it certainly didn't happen in my school. There was zero education about politics whatsoever. And by politics, I mean how countries are governed, how nations are structured, how voting works. Um, just none of this took place, none of this took place. But at the German school that I was fortunate to have um, a few weeks at, they were educated about this. And I believe that if people had known exactly what the EU does, or how subsidies work, or how British farming was basically propped up by EU, maybe results would have been a bit different. But the incredible thing is that over the last couple of years, I think this issue has been exposed. Um, you know, since the whole Brexit referendum and then people said, oh, people didn't know what they were voting for. And then the people started saying, you know, some people tried to say, look at what the EU actually provides. The incredible thing is a lot of people went, oh, don't want to know, don't want to know, want to stick with my old ideas about, you know, ruling the waves and all this stuff. And we, we don't we don't need to get on with other people and we don't need to trade with Europe. I and mean, we don't need these people. I mean, we've got other people to trade with. I mean, we can start trading with weird dictatorships or um, failed states or, um, you know, places where human rights are completely, you know, ignored. Um, doesn't matter to us. Doesn't matter to us. And I find that so terrifying. It's like a complete lack of ethics. It's like, I just don't care about other people anymore. Um, and also a complete mis miscomprehension about immigration, like the difference between uh, economic migration and um, refu refugee, uh, you know, arriving at a country as a refugee and not people not really understanding the difference of that and thinking that leaving the EU would somehow stop refugees. And, you know, you have to ask yourself why are people so uh, unconcerned about other people that are fleeing violence? Like, I don't know. It's just to me, it feels like a society in complete moral decline, and I do believe that it has a lot to do with this latent feeling of superiority of imperialism that was never made very conscious, and and now it's coming out in the most horrific, horrible way. Um, so I've been going off quite a long time, so I probably should 
you know, shut up at this point. But I, I just felt that I had to say these things. And um, I want to say it in black and white as well. And I want to say it in black and white because I feel that this is a dark period. You know, something dark is going on. And, um, you know, I'm, I feel really upset by it. Um, but I really want to uh, praise people like Caroline Lucas, um, the Green Party politician from Brighton and Hove, because I feel that very few people have really, in politics, in England, have really expressed a clear message in a decent way and have tried to express things beyond Brexit, which I think is a very selfish project. I mean, the whole Brexit thing is totally nation selfish. And Caroline um, has talked about, you know, social justice, about the environment, you know, has tried to focus on things that will affect generations way beyond our own. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like no one cares. I mean, I don't know what to say. It's like so few people seem to care. And, and you know, am I wrong? I mean, because if they cared, why are we ending up with this result? So, um, yeah, um, what can I say? It's like the, the era of I obsession with identity, all forms of identity. And, and, you know, this is obsession with nation identity, uh, I feel, in the most disgusting and horrific way. Um, so in conclusion, um, I don't know, I'm going to go and read some George Orwell or something. And um, yeah, I'm sad to say I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm not living in England at the moment. And um, I, I feel that my birth country is like drifting away from me emotionally. And it's been happening for a long time, but it's like all of these things chip away at what remains. And, you know, it's hard to keep the candle for um, Britain alive at this moment. So um, thank you for listening. Bye.